we are making halibut with an ancho tamarind sauce. Uh, I was able to find actual tamarind seed uh, at the grocery store. You can often buy it in a cube uh, already peeled. Um, that's usually how we find it, but this is my first opportunity to actually cook with the, uh, the actual seed, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're gonna use four anchos. I think this one tamarind is gonna be enough. Um, I'm gonna peel this and uh, put it in some hot water to soak. And I was expecting it to peel a little easier than that. I'm thinking now I can go down these strings. There we go. Oh. <laughs> so in addition to our anchos and tamarind, this is going to have raisins, brown sugar, black pepper, uh, oregano, Mexican oregano, and uh, cinnamon, and, and garlic. And that will be our flavors. So of course, none of these dishes seem to come without a lot of prep work. So the anchos I will peel, take the seed, or not peel, take the seeds out of, and uh, then I will put them in a, a dry frying pan to kind of sweat them a little bit. And uh, then I will soak them in water to get them ready for this fun activity. Here's my, uh, I have one cup of water hot and I'm gonna soak this tamarind in it. It's, it's a nice gooey fruit. Um, it's gonna soften up nicely in this water. And okay, so once I've got my chilies, uh, once I've kind of toasted them a little bit, I'm also gonna, I have a half a head of garlic here that still has its peels on it. I'm gonna toast this in the same pan after the chilies are out of it um, until the, the peels are black in places. And after that, I'll let them cool and then I'll peel them. Uh, so then, and then at that point, we'll be ready to assemble our sauce. Go. All right, so I've got most of the seeds out of these chilies. We're gonna strain these later, so getting every little seed out of them is not necessary. Um, and now I'm going to just sweat them a little. You wanna be careful not to burn them. They will get bitter if they're burned. But you really just, you, you kind of push down on them a little bit on a dry, hot pan. And you'll notice them start to, sometimes they bubble a little bit. They get aromatic. These are things you want. Um, we bought these chilies in New Mexico. We went to Hatch and uh, looked for some, some chilies to buy. I was actually, I was looking for a place where I could reliably mail order dried chilies and I did not find one. So we'll go back to getting New Mexico chilies that have been shipped to New Jersey and then sent to us. Yeah, Hatch was kind of a small little town. We were a little surprised. Not a lot going on in no. Hatch. There's several chili stores though. No real places to eat. <laughs> I think inside the, the grocery store was one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just surprising. But there were a few. There were a few, uh, few things going stores. on. So this process just brings out a little flavor from these chilies and uh, kind of caramelizes a little bit. All right, let's go into the bowl with these. I have my bowl of hot water. Boom. So if... Um, if you have trouble getting these to sit down in the water, you can just stick a small plate on top. But those will soak for about 30 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna take our garlic and cook this on here. I want it to get blackened a little bit. Uh, so that does take a little bit of time. Um, this garlic also, we. Uh, bought at Farmer's Market. 
nice, spicy. Nice, big, fresh, big, giant That's really cloves. nice. You gotta get some more. Yeah. So this is about a half a head. Uh, these are really big cloves, so the, a half a head is only five cloves. But um, whatever, whatever it takes to get, uh, get to a half a head, that's what you want. And, uh, Ah, okay, this is exciting. This is pretty exciting. I, I don't want to wear our audience out with excitement too soon. So it's taken quite a while to get uh, any kind of color on these. They're starting to get a little bit now. And this has probably been going on here for almost 10 minutes. They're coming along. All right, so our chilies are soaked. Our tamarind is soaked. Uh, peeled the garlic. So tamarind has seeds. So the trick here is getting the seeds off the fruit. What's the seed look like? And they're pretty large. Hmm. There's some stringiness involved here with the fruit. Um, hmm. It's not uh, it's not coming off as easily as I'd like. Maybe that uh, may be more, cube of paste is better than us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there may be more of a trick to this than I'm than I know about. Um, so <laughs> I'll figure that out. In the meantime. I'm going to add my soaked chilies to my blender. And my garlic. Uh, That's peeled? Yeah, you said that. Yes, I peeled it. Uh, so, a uh, quarter cup of raisins going into this and we've put in uh, about a quarter teaspoon of uh, black pepper, a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon. I hope so. <laughs> it is. Um, Just filled it up. Okay, the sugar we add later. All right, so let me figure out this tamarind and then uh, we'll come back. All right, so I've been able to get a little bit of tamarind squeezing this off the seeds, but the thing is it's all stuck to my hands. I can't really get it into my blender. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do this. And, Guess you're gonna uh, have to YouTube that. Hopefully, I'll get a cooking lesson in Oaxaca someday, and they'll show me how to do this. Um, but I got this much. I'm gonna use it. It's not much at all. And then I do have. tamarind. It uh, comes in a brick with that label on it. And we cut it into little and chunks. And then yes, we cut it into little chunks and freeze it. And this one I've already used half the chunk. Last time I made this, I believe. But there we have a, you know, that's a lot easier. <laughs> it is a lot easier. We're just going to put that in there and uh, we're going to add our tamarind soaking liquid. And that is our sauce. And we still have some chili soaking liquid if we need more liquid. So we're just going to blend this up as smoothly as we can and uh, see what we can get out of this and we'll just shove it through a strainer. 
So I've got a pretty smooth paste going here. Um, I'm gonna put it in a strainer. It's not, you know, it's it's pretty thick, so this is going to be a challenge to get this to go through this strainer as it so often is, but it always works. So we will, uh, I'll spend some time with this and we'll come back when it's uh, done. So this worked really well. It wasn't really all that difficult. It didn't take all that long and that's all I'm leaving behind. That's chilly skins and uh, tamarind pulp and whatnot. So I've got a couple tablespoons of oil on uh, kind of a medium heat and I'm getting the oil hot. And I'm just going to dump the whole thing right in and it should, if the oil is hot enough, uh, which it might not have been, it should start boiling right away. Ah! Oops. There it is. Yep. And I need to that spoon so I can stir it right away so it doesn't explode all over the place. Like on me, when you do that. And we're going to do this, we're going to cook this now for about six minutes. And if you just keep stirring, hopefully it won't spit all over the ceiling. <laughs> um, but we just want this, we want this to cook and get these flavors married and get them matured a little bit, cooking them in oil. And as you can see, it's just a really nice, smooth sauce. Yeah, that's training. It's the, the trick, huh? Yep. And, uh, yeah, this, this sauce is really good. It's, it's super good on the fish. Uh, we had it on uh, cho uh, chayote, ch ch chayote? Chay chayote squash <laughs> uh, last time we did this, and it was delicious. I think maybe we had it on... We had it on something else, I can't remember what. Well, the halibut is all I remember. Oh. You know, using it later. Hmm. Eggs or something. Oh know. yeah, maybe. But, um, tamarind is a sour, slightly sour fruit. Um, so it... Uh, it's got a little spice to it, right? No. Not much? No. I feel like... It, Any yeah. spice in this is going to come from the anchos, which they don't usually have much. Mm. And once uh, we cook this for about six minutes or so, we take it off the heat and add a quarter cup of brown sugar. Oops, exploding. All right, so here we have our two lovely pieces of halibut. This, we bought a, a halibut from uh, the Oceana at the docks. And uh, love cooking with it. I've cooled down our marinade so you have to uh, kind of plan ahead a little on this because the marinade needs time, time to cool and the oh, fish needs about an hour in the marinade. So Here, I'm gonna pause. Hang on. Yeah I'm gonna pause. Okay, get rid of the tractor noise. Go ahead. So the fish is gonna need about an hour in the marinade and uh, inside a Ziploc is a great way to do this. Uh, just get all the air out and then you just have fish and sauce. And we have a little bit of sauce left for when we serve up. But this will, uh, this is actually going to marinate for an hour and a half or so. And it's really going to be delicious. Right, so we're getting ready to barbecue our fish. And having a basket for fish is just invaluable. This, this thing. Uh, it holds everything together. Fish, when it's cooking, can kind of fall apart, stick to the grill, all that stuff. So I have um, oiled this basket. I sprayed it with uh, cooking spray. Um, if you want to put more sauce on, you have the sauce in the bag. I'm not sure I do right at the moment. Um, This has, definitely has the potential to get really messy. <laughs> yeah, you think? So I'm just gonna, maybe right there. There we go. 
Okay, so that's ready for the grill. With the basket, I can just flip it over. Um, no problemo. The grill's ready for the fish. So here we go. The flies aren't getting it. <laughs> I just love how this cutting board just fits right there. It was made for it. Okay, so I'm just going to go two minutes on a side, and it, this should work out just perfectly. Um, I might do one more minute on this side. Yeah, I think last time you did one yeah, more minute. flip it. Put okay. some extra sauce on and flip it. But we'll set but the timer we now. All right, our first two minutes is over. We're just gonna <laughs> flip this. Oh yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. And uh, yep, two more minutes. So we did two minutes on the side, and I re-painted uh, it with um, the sauce. And one minute flat on the uh, more so on the first side. Like five five minutes. minutes. So. Figure it out. Oh, Can't. I can get it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't break a job of that. <clears throat> it's beautiful. Sort of. I think. as nicely that's okay this one's beautiful there put some sauce on that you'll never know <laughs> okay i think since this is all hot i'm just thinking of putting it outside you can just set it yeah. over there that's fine hmm. okay i guess we need some You got to turn it off to both still. On. <laughs> this is usually my job. We do a lot of just meat and veg around here. Occasionally, uh, some mashers. Yeah, this would be really good with mashed potatoes. Yeah, I would. <clears throat> I just don't get to do that. Mm How -hmm. it's can be so good. Yeah, we've halibut. had it like what three times since we bought it, and mm -hmm. it's it's been moist and perfect. Okay, that's a good pile. Need some uh, some butter and some. Yep, we'll sauce. deal with that in a minute. But you can just taste it. All right, I'll taste it. Just taste it, and then we're gonna add butter. We're probably gonna add some more sauce to this too. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that's really, really good. The, the sauce itself is kind of, um, it's kind of like an apple, like applesauce. It's kind of, it's the, um, the fruit gives it that tang of a, of an applesauce. And cooked in here, it is just absolutely delicious. The fish is cooked perfectly. And this is ready to go. I'm gonna put more sauce on my fish and on my broccoli. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But this is it. Um, so thanks for watching Two Cooks in the Kitchen. Subscribe 
and you'll see all the silly things that we do. <laughs> um, I've, I've been on a Mexican food kick, so you'll see some Mexican cooking. There's a guess. lot of Mexican stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll see you next time.